Hey guys, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R940XA server. In this video we're going to cover processors, but in the series as a whole we're going to cover CPUs, RAM, drives, power supplies, racking. We're going to show you how to update your BIOS, how to do mass updates, how to install a Windows Server operating system, plus a bunch more. So click that like and smash that subscribe. Let's get going. Hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R940XA server. This video is going to be specifically focused on processors, so let's go ahead and hop in. So we're going to do this video as a whole. We're going to cover some general information to let you know the CPU compatibilities. We're going to go over the CPUs that we recommend because we get asked that all the time. And then at the end, we're going to show you how to install a new processor. So we're going to do a whole bunch of this. So let's go ahead and hop into the good stuff. All right, so there are four processors inside the R940XA server. That's one of the huge benefits of this GPU server is that there are four processors inside. It's an LGA3647 socket, which means it takes Intel scalable first and second gen processors. So it's Intel scalable first and second gen processors. That's going to be your gold 5100 and 5200 series procs, your gold 6100 and 6200 series procs, and your platinum 8100 and 8200 procs. So yes, it does not include the silvers. So the silver 4100 and 4200 are out. It's going to be the gold 5100 up to the platinum uh, 8200. So that's going to be your whole range right there. So people ask all the time, hey, what procs do you recommend? And really, it's a great question. And it depends on your application. So what we've done is we've broken it down into three different categories. We have our low-end procs, our value procs, and our high-end procs. The low-end procs are going to be for your budget-friendly applications, which really, for this machine, not a lot of people are going to be using the low-end procs. We have our value procs, which are going to be a great sweet spot for some just good, good procs as a whole that'll work but aren't going to break the bank. And then we have our high-end procs that are going to be really the uh, the procs you're going to be using a lot in these machines because you're going to want uh, really the best procs because this is going to be a beefy machine as a whole. So let's go ahead and start with the low end. All right, so on the low end side, there's three processors that we recommend. That's going to be the Gold 5118, the Gold 5122, and the Gold 5220. That's going to be a 2.3, 3.6, and a 2.2. 12 core, 4 core, and 18 core. And I like all these because it's a, a wide mix here, right? So if you're sensitive to uh, Microsoft core licensing and you can't have a ton of cores, hey, that 4 core, 3.6 gigahertz might be perfect for you. Uh, if you're looking for something that's just going to be on the low end and inexpensive, hey, the uh, 5118 might be great for you. And then the 5220 is also just a good one because it's 2.2 and it's 18 cores. So the overall speed uh, in cores will be a, a just a good low end proc as a whole. All right, for the value procs, there's three that we recommend. That's going to be the 6126, the 6230, and the 6252. That's going to be a 2.6, 2.1, 2.1. Uh, 12 core, 20 core, and 24 core. Um, so a good, a, ni a nice little mix again. So the uh, 2.6, 12 core again, in case you're worried about Microsoft operating system licensing, that could be a nice value proc for you. Uh, we threw in some second gen as well because the 6230 has come down in pricing and is a great option if you do need a second gen scalable. Um, and then the 6258 is just a great, pro or 6252 is a great proc as a whole uh, just because it's got uh, 24 cores um, and is a nice uh, value proc right there. So now I'll talk about the high end procs. These are really what we do recommend for the uh, R940XA as a whole, and that's going to be the 8160, the 8260, and the 8280. All three of these are platinum procs. They're going to be 2.1, 2.4, 2.7, 24 core, 24 core, and 28 core. And all these, again, are going to be uh, just high cores, uh, good speeds, uh, basically just great high end procs that you will be able to use uh, to maximize the GPUs inside of your R940XA server. All right, now that we know a little bit more about the procs we recommend and the procs as a whole, we're going to show you how to physically install them and remove your old processor. But before we do, I'm going to grab my EST gear. Be right back. All right, I have my EST gear on. We're safe to work on our machine and handle the components. Uh, so what I wanted to do was lay out everything that we're going to use in advance. So we have CPUs that we're going to be installing and upgrading to. We have thermal paste that we'll need to put on to them when we do install them. We have a nice clean rag here so that we can clean off the thermal paste on the heat sink when we remove it. And then we have a T30 bit, so it's not a regular Phillips head, but a T30 bit that we're going to need to uh, remove our heat sink and reinstall it. So that's everything that we're going to need. So let's go ahead and toss it to the side for now. Won't toss the CPUs. We can toss the rag. but <laughs> uh, Alright, so now we're just going to pop the top like anything before and we're going to go ahead and start our install. 
All right, so to start, you're gonna unscrew these two blue screws with a regular old Phillips head screwdriver. So one thing you'll also notice is that I'm using a manual screwdriver. I'm a big fan of the manual screwdrivers as opposed to the electric or the automatic. The electric ones, while they're you know very handy, tend to uh, strip the screws a little bit more. And once those are properly unscrewed, you're going to take these two ends, you're gonna pull them inwards and lift to remove the bracket. Now you're gonna take this cover off by pushing these two levers inward and just lift straight up, set that to the side. All right, next thing we're gonna do is move these cables to the side, just take the cables out from under the hooks and we're gonna set them to the side for now. Now you're gonna remove the air baffle. Essentially, you're just gonna use both sides. You're gonna press outward and lift straight up. So yes, press outward and just lift straight up, very easy. All right, you can see the four heat sinks on top of the CPUs. The next step we're gonna do is remove these two risers. All right, so all you're gonna do is use this blue lever, push it forward to unlock, and you're gonna be able to lift the riser straight up. Same thing for the next riser, just gonna push the lever forward and lift the riser straight up. Now we can remove the second part of the air baffle. All you must do is go to the sides and make sure you unhook the baffle here. And once you have it unhooked, you can just lift it straight up. And now we can finally see inside of our server clearly and we have access to all four heat sinks. So as you can see, this is CPU 1, CPU 2, CPU 3, and CPU 4. The heat sinks can be a little tricky to remove from the processor, so here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna grab a T30 bit. Most heat sinks have four screws. As you can see here, this one only has two, with one on each side. So you're gonna go ahead and start unscrewing each side of the heat sink. All right, now all you gotta do is pull back these blue clips, the one in the front and the one in the back, and lift the heat sink straight up. So what we're gonna do is remove from the heat sink the little plastic bracket here. So essentially we're just going to uh, take these small pegs in each corner and then just pop them off the heat sink and remove the bracket to start. All right, so now you're gonna grab your CPU. You need to look for a gold triangle on the corner of the CPU. That gold triangle is gonna be very, very helpful that's going to let you know where to line up the CPU with the bracket, with the heatsink, and with the motherboard. That triangle is just going to be a guide the entire time. So go ahead and match up the triangle with the bracket and match up the triangle with the heatsink. Slide the processor into the two clips at the top and the bottom. As you can see, it will not fall out. It's safely secured inside the bracket. Now what we're going to do is apply the thermal paste. So go ahead and just grab some thermal paste, put it on top of your heat sink, or excuse me, put it on top of your CPU. Now this is a point where, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have some uh, wars in the comment section. Some people say we don't put enough on, some people think we put a little bit too much on. I'm probably going to put a little bit extra on this go around because this uh, type of system in particular is a little bit hotter than some of the older systems so we're going to make sure that we have enough thermal paste but again not too much that it's going to flake off the side or get into the motherboard you do need to have a nice even balance of not too too much thermal paste. So now we're going to grab now we're going to grab our heat sink and we are going to attach it to the CPU bracket combo. So again we're going to follow the triangles here just match up your triangles with the bracket with the heat sink and then you're going to pop the bracket CPU onto the heat sink and just do it very gently and just make sure that each corner is properly slotted and fully inserted and then you can flip over the heat sink and make sure that uh, it is properly on there and installed properly and doesn't fall off. So now the next thing we're gonna do is install the heat sink with the CPU back onto the motherboard. So again, we're gonna line up the triangle. So you'll see the triangle on the motherboard. You'll see the triangle on the heat sink. Just make sure that those are on the same path so that everything is lined up properly. And then essentially just gonna grab your T30 bit and screw your heat sink back to the motherboard. We did it. We have successfully upgraded our CPU. So if you made it this far, hey, click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any custom built R940 XAs or any other server for that matter, we do new and we do used. We do Dell, HPE, Supermicro, Cisco, Lenovo. If you need custom built white box servers, we can do them for gaming rigs, for AMD Epics, for Ryzen's, whatever you need. Uh, we're able to help out. So please email us at sales at cloudengine.com. That's sales at cloudengine.com. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Take care.